Hey everyone, it's Sebastian again with the Sciatica series that we have a playlist that we're accumulating a lot of the questions you guys have asked either to us or on Google um, about sciatica. Uh, it's hard to find really good updated answers nowadays and so that's the point of this uh, playlist for you guys. At any point in time, if you want to skip forward to different questions that we have, and I have them right here on my phone, um, you can use the timestamps I've supplied them below. So the first questions we're going to cover today, uh, we're going to do two of them today. And it's how can I stand up with, uh, straight with sciatica? And why is sciatica worse when I walk? Okay. Uh, at any point in time, if you guys decide you want to work with us, by the way, we see a lot of people with sciatica and low back pain uh, and so on, and it, and it tends to work out really well. Okay. So the first question again is why can't I stand up straight with sciatica? There's can be various different reasons for this. Um, remember that your condition, your specific diagnosis, and the mechanics of what your body likes and doesn't like dictates uh, why you can't really walk uh, upright. However, the most common one that we typically see, and this is usually for people that are suffering from some type of low back disc irritation of some type, is they'll have this kind of crooked walk like this, like they're actually kind of crooked. Now, there's a popular belief that this is because of a tight hip flexor. Um, in my opinion, and I'm gonna have the reserve the right to change my mind one day, that is completely incorrect. Uh, this is a, we call this an antalgic position. It's your body trying to get away from some type of irritation. And so this is very, very classic of something like a low back disc, a posterior lateral uh, type of herniation or something of even higher severity with disc because there's a lot of progressions of different types of disc injuries. This position can create some leg pain. Now, if you've been in this position or if you are in this position now, um, I'm sorry to hear about it. It's, it's a challenging to get out of on your own, to be honest with you. Um, but there is recovery for you. The, this ha we've seen quite a few people like this in our office. Uh, when you get out of a car or, some, or get out of a seat, and I, I remember a lady specifically like this, is she would drive to our office uh, and she would get out and you'd see her from the car kind of walking crooked like this. After we did our first exercise, she actually straightened up really nicely. And then she would go home and she'd drive her car to her home and she would get out and she'd report she'd be crooked again. And so a lot of times the things that you're doing prior to the crookedness is something that's aggravating your condition. So if something like sitting or prolonged sitting or driving are things that will create your crookedness or the inability to walk straight with sciatica, um, then it's probably one of the major players in what's making your problem progress itself. Now, a lot of times when people have this type of thing when they're getting out of the car or sitting, I usually just tell them, um, again, you should be checked out by your medical provider. I tell them to get up and just see if they can just straighten themselves out a little bit. Normally, after doing about 10 reps of just kind of pushing yourself into the right position, it tends to help out a lot. And then they start to kind of lean back a little bit and just kind of stretch their back out. Doing the opposite of the thing that put them in this situation anyways, because rounding is what put them in the position. Doing a little bit of that is actually pretty helpful sometimes when you do enough of them. Obviously, there's multiple reasons for you to not be able to walk straight when having sciatica. <clears throat> Other things like foraminal encroachment, um, radiculopathies, these are things that actually probably won't get better with the strategy that I talked about. You actually have to do other strategies because the mechanics of what are happening are a little bit different. Now, uh, I'm going to pull up this disc model uh, and this nerve model just a little bit so you guys can see. Um, that we have other videos on disc herniations, by the way. You guys can look that up. <clears throat> when a disc is herniated or protruded or uh, injured in, in so many terms is that you'll see that this material right here, as I squish, the, as I round my back, it'll start to kind of squish backwards. Uh, there we go, it's starting to squish backwards. This hole is actually absent of a nerve because it ripped off, but there's a nerve that goes through that hole too. Uh, and if the disc starts to put pressure, too much pressure on the nerve, it'll create the sciatica type presentation. However, when some people bend their back backwards, they'll create the irritation as well because the hole actually has um, potential to get smaller as you bend your back backwards. And so walking by nature is an extension-based activity. It's extension. And everything from your hips to your low back is just kind of extended. Sitting or driving is like a rounded one. So 
um, what you actually have going on uh, mechanically will dictate the reason why you can't really walk straight with sciatica, but that's, that's one thing. Uh, the second question we have, uh, by the way, uh, at any point in time, if you want to learn a little bit more about sciatica, we do have a free gift for you guys. We supply it on all these videos, um, the best of our ability. It's more, uh, I don't want to say complex, more comprehensive information than just general questioning such as this. Um, this the other question was, was why is sciatica worse when I walk? Well, um, as the things that I mentioned before, uh, sometimes, um, again, walking with, it, it provides the extension and the extension is creating your problem. You might notice that actually something like this might actually feel pretty good. Um, uh, Stuart McGill has, uh, I think he's coined this term as the shortstop position because it's like you're playing shortstop. And you just kind of relax and just hang out. Um, some people of older age who have um, like uh, the claudication um, into the low back area will have symptoms that actually reduce with things like this or sitting. Um, I always kind of think that's why park benches are a certain distance away because it gives people a chance to take a break. Another thing you can do too, another thing from McGill's uh, literature, is swing your arms when you walk. Obviously, I'm not going to walk because I'll get out of frame. But if you swing your arms like you own the world, that'll help out to engage the core. Um, also, it'll stiffen the core a little bit in a good way. And it'll make it so your ball and socket joints of your hip will help out to deload and spare the spine. Now, also too, the pace that you walk matters too. I remember a patient in particular that we worked with that when she walked slow, she was actually this person. When we got her to pick up the pace like she's late for an airplane, she actually straightened out. And once she slowed down again, she got crooked again. It was an amazing thing to see. And so um, sometimes the pace matters. So the, uh, the reason why that occurs is because the slower you go within reason, the more static um, forces your lower back has to overcome before your next step. And there's an elastic recoil type of effect that happens when you walk um, at a little bit more hefty pace, not running, not speed walking, but just kind of in the middle, is it starts to, it deloads the back. It helps out quite a bit. And walking overall is typically a very good intervention and treatment for low back pain and sciatica. Um, we have a general saying here, when you can walk, start walking. If you can only walk for like 10 minutes, walk eight to nine minutes, and then take a little break on a park bench and go again. Um, whenever you can walk, start walking because walking is a normal everyday activity. And one of the quickest ways to get yourself into retirement home is number one, not being able to walk anywhere or get around the house. Number two is not being able to get on and off the toilet, the inability to squat. Okay, so I hope that was helpful to you guys. Uh, we're gonna do more videos of this type of nature on YouTube. Um, we realize there's not a lot of great information out there on sciatica or at least um, underdated information. And so um, if, you, if at any point in time, again, if you want us to help, we do offer virtual or in-person services. We've seen a lot of people with leg pain, buttocks pain, piriformis, SI joint, low back pain, groin pain, um, tightness of the hamstrings, and so on. We've seen a lot of people with this stuff, even numbness of the foot. Um, the quicker you address this thing, the, the easier it is for you. And I do not mean, I mean that with full transparency. The sooner you catch it, the easier it is for everybody to manage uh, and for you, for your sanity to be able to recover from. So we're available. Uh, you can always link, uh, you can always find this in the link descriptions below. Uh, and take advantage of the free offer that we have for you guys. Um, it's intended to give you more information than anybody else has, uh, at least on the internet. So we'll see you guys next time.